primus humilitatis gradus est, si timorem dei sibi ante oculos semper ponens, oblivionem omnino fugiat. Located in the most picturesque of locations, the monastery of Mount St. Benedict has been a beacon of hope, goodwill and peace for many throughout its existence. Nestled in the verdant forest of the Northern Range, the Mount, as it is fondly called, has played a significant role in the development of the religious landscape, not only of Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the Caribbean region. A home away from home, visitors from all walks of life are welcomed with open arms by the Benedictine monks, whether it's for a spiritual visit or to simply relax and bask in the ambiance of the serene environment. Dedicated to Our Lady of Exile, the Abbey was founded in 1912 by Dom Mayol de Kenny, then abbot of the Abbey of San Sebastian in Bahia, Brazil, who was seeking refuge for his monks due to the threat of religious persecution. Our Abbey is the daughter of a monastery in Brazil, in Bahia. And in the early 20th century, there was the threat of religious persecution. And the abbot of that monastery, Abbot Mayel de Caini, was looking for a place of refuge or exile for his monks. He wrote Archbishop Pius Dowling, and uh, he was warmly accepted to send monks here. So on the 6th of October, three monks were sent from the monastery in Brazil to begin monastic life here. Up to 1923, they increased and multiplied. Now, most of the recruits, funny enough, came from Holland or Belgium. They had, of course, some recruits from the locality here, but uh, from Trinidad, but the majority were, in fact, Dutchmen or Belgians, and some of them were Germans, even. Guided by the motto Pax, which is the Latin word for peace, the Mount is an escape from the ordinary and essentially a place where people come to find inner peace and a sense of God. Ever since I retired in 1996 from the public service, I've been visiting this holy place, Mount St. Benedict, every morning, most, most times, definitely on a Sunday or feast days. I come especially to praise God and to give him thanks for all the benefits that he has given to me and my family. In Holy Scripture, we see that several key figures encounter God on a mountain. Moses received the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai. Elijah encountered God on Mount Carmel and also on Mount Horeb. In the New Testament, we see Jesus giving a new way of relating to God and to each other on a mountain. Benedictines have long recognized the mountain as a place of encounter with God and have consistently built their monasteries on mountains and hilltops. Dedicated to uplifting lives through religious work, their commitment has spanned throughout many areas in Trinidad and Tobago. Mount St. Benedict has played a significant part in the wider church of Trinidad and Tobago. From the very beginning, we have been involved in parish life. Several of our priests have spent several years in parishes as far as Erin, uh, San Fernando, Aruca, and we have served the church well in those areas. We were also responsible for the establishment of the regional seminary. Um, in 1943, Archbishop Fimba Ryan asked the monks whether they would be willing to be responsible for the formation of young men who are considering a call to the priesthood. And so from 1943, we established a seminary within the womb of the monastery where several local people were trained for the wider church. Um, we have been involved in agriculture, producing honey and sheep rearing and turkey rearing over the years. Um, we have been part of the Bible school. You know, we have done several things that has enhanced the life of the Christian in the church in Trinidad and Tobago. Every year, 
Pilgrims visit the mound for various religious celebrations in the Roman Catholic Church. On Good Friday, thousands flock to the mount for the Stations of the Cross, which commemorates the passion and the death of Jesus Christ. Good Friday leads up to Easter, the high point of the monastic year. This is the commemoration of the resurrection of Christ from the dead. It is the ultimate triumph of good over evil, of light over darkness, of life over death. Each year, Easter is celebrated at the Mount in a most solemn and joyous manner during the Easter Vigil. The procession of the lighted Paschal candle in the darkness of night symbolizes the light of Christ, illuminating all the areas of darkness in our society and in the world. Christmas is also celebrated in a grand manner. Hundreds of pilgrims fill the beautifully decorated church to celebrate and rejoice the birth of Jesus Christ. 100 years of worship, sacrifice and dedication, leading the lost to the right path, going beyond borders to fulfill a destiny. Oziositas inimica est anime. Et ideo, occupari debent fratres, certis temporibus in labore manum, certis iterum horis in lexione divina. The major work of the monk is the Opus Dei, the work of God. This consists of the divine office and the liturgy. The Benedictine way, however, encompasses all avenues of life. Over the years, the monks have strived to share their knowledge with the young through educational institutions established for this purpose. Education has always been part and parcel of the Benedictine way of life. And in 1915, the abbot founder, Dom Mayol de Caini, started teaching young men who wanted to become priests philosophy and theology. In 1930, we took over the parish of San Fernando and we started an, a school there called St. Benedict's San Fernando. 1948, that school was given over to the Presentation Brothers and which is now called Presentation College. In 1943, we got a very important request from the Archbishop Finbaran to start the seminary, which we did. Together with the seminary, we started a boarding school, which we call Pax College. Both were started on the same day in January 1943. The last bit after that was when Father Dom Basil went to San Fernando, and he started the school there called St. Benedict's La Romaine. The Mount St. Benedict Abbey School operated from 1943 until 1985. The St. Bede Vocational School was also the brainchild of the monks. 
Founded in 1967, it was the first private non-profit making school in the nation. This institution fostered the expansion of technical and vocational education in Trinidad and Tobago and fulfilled its aim of training boys for immediate employment in areas such as bookbinding, machine shop craft and woodwork. Although St. Bede's closed its doors in 2004, the concept of preparing youth for the workplace continues to operate under the management of Metal Industries Company, MIC, catering to the needs of young people throughout the island. Another initiative that has now become a signature product of the Mount is Pax Yogurt. Long enjoyed by many, this yogurt is distributed island-wide and is made with all natural products, making for a healthy meal substitute. One of the mottos of the Benedictines is Ora et Labora, two Latin words which means pray and work. So in addition to a life of prayer, we also put emphasis on work and yogurt production is one of the works that we do at present in order to help sustain the monastery. We began very simply, as I said, first by trying to augment the diet of the monks and also offering to friends and some of the embassies, the foreign embassies heard about it and they started to place small orders. Little by little, the word got around that the monks were preparing yogurt and the demand began to increase. Woodwork and agriculture are also integral activities in the monastery. Bookbinding is another niche developed, and the Mount is perhaps one of the few places locally that upholds this skill. Manual labor has always held pride of place in the Benedictine tradition, as St. Benedict clearly states in his rule, when they live by the labor of their hands, as our fathers and the apostles did, then they are truly monks. Rule of St. Benedict, chapter 48, 8. For the pilgrims who would like to carry a piece of the mount with them, the Pax Abbey shop provides a variety of books and religious items and is always bustling with visitors. Crucifixes produced by the monks are offered for sale. The facility consists of a cafeteria and a souvenir bookshop. There are rosaries, statues, medals and scapulars. The wide variety of books includes a substantial amount of literature on Benedictine spirituality, particularly as it can be applied to the busy modern person engrossed in the affairs of daily living. The shop is professionally managed and is always well stocked. From the first days of the coming of the monks, there's always been this facility providing pilgrims with much needed spiritual food. Parents often make return visits as there's also an emphasis on children's books which helped to introduce the young ones gradually to the faith. Et solicitudo sit, si novitius revera deum querit. Si solicitus est ad opus dei, ad obediensiam, ad opprobria. Known as the father of Western monasticism, Benedict was born to a Christian family in Italy in the year 480. At age 16, he was sent to Rome to study law but became exceedingly unhappy with the hedonistic values of the society. It became clear that this was not his calling, and so he left his studies and journeyed to Subiaco, where he lived in solitude and prayed for guidance. He soon developed a reputation for holiness, and a group of monks invited him to be their abbot. The monks were not sincere, and soon they tried to poison him. He then returned to the wilderness he loved at Subiaco to continue his life as a hermit. After some years of reflection, a great number of men gathered around him to devote themselves to God. Soon, he established twelve monasteries there, with an abbot and twelve monks in each of them. He began to teach them the way of love and prayer that he had learnt. This site is considered the cradle of Benedictine monasticism. This, however, was not meant to be the final monastery of Benedict, as they were forced to vacate the site by neighboring priests. This led to the formation of the Monte Cassino Monastery, which overlooks the plains of Campania and is still in existence today. St. Benedict wrote his rule for monks in the monastery of Monte Cassino. Cradled within the walls of Mount St. Benedict today is a statue of St. Benedict, a permanent reminder of the beliefs on which the abbey was founded.
just before the war, 1913, uh, Dom Mayul had been to uh, Germany and bought a lovely statue of St. Benedict, which he installed in the church, and they had a procession from the port of Spain, a magnificent procession. It was almost unbelievable, the number of cars and people who went in this uh, holy procession, and they installed St. Benedict. And from then on, and even on to now, the pilgrimage to the shrine of St. Benedict is one of the great attractions of uh, Mount St. Benedict. A monk is someone in humble search of the ultimate. He has received the divine call to follow Christ. He follows a rule which is based on the gospel and he lives under an abbot. He is bound to practice the law of hospitality and above all, a monk is a man of peace. Um, I came from a very Catholic family. My father and mother were both very staunch Catholics. So we had that Catholic atmosphere of church, morning mass. So um, I grew up in that kind of atmosphere. But what I think could also have influenced me, especially my younger age, was um, the book Seven Story Mountain by Thomas Merton. I read that and that certainly influenced me towards this kind of contemplative life. There are specific times that the monks meet each day to pray in common. At Mount St. Benedict, the monks meet five times each day to pray and his quiet moments of Lectio Divina help to cultivate a love for God. The monk is essentially a man of prayer, a man of God. When one lives a monastic life, one devotes himself to the Christian life, renounces all his worldly values and practices a positive form of penance. One must practice silence, humility, poverty and obedience. The first few years um, I was very committed here and very stationary here, the first six or seven years, you know. Then I was sent abroad to, um, to study for theology, you know, the theology degree. And um, after three and a half years I, I came back and I gradually, I, I was teaching for a little while both here in, in, uh, in Jamaica in the seminary. But when I came back here, I got more involved in pastoral work and parish work, you know, and I was assigned, um, first parish was in Central in Karapit Shaima that I had. I stayed there for 10 years building new church there. Then I came back here down the road in St. John's and my last parish was in Mont Repo. And from that time, I, I decided to come back, you know, because in a parish you're all alone and here you have the support of a community, you know. A monastery is a place where peace is sought where monks practice fraternal charity towards each other and to all with whom they come in contact. Above all, it is a place of solace, where one can seek counsel and advice from the monks and achieve a deeper level of spiritual awareness. At Mount St. Benedict, it is in the parlor ministry that many persons seek out a word. And over the years, we have counseled thousands of people and we call in our monastery here, we call that ministry the parlor ministry, the counseling rooms we call parlors, where people can find a monk, a priest or a brother, and sit with them and um, find uh, some consolation in their brokenness, to get peace of mind, to pray with them, to say a psalm with them, to receive a blessing. Retreats are another form of ministry that is similar to the parlor ministry, but it is more structured. The retreat ministry has become very popular over the years. Um, many people come to the monastery from various parts of the country. Um, these retreats usually take two forms. Um, one is group retreats and the other is personal retreats. Um, for the group retreats, um, usually it's a number of people that come together and uh, this is usually over a weekend. Um, so they would come and um, we would give them a program for the weekend. Um, Brother Tony is the retreat master and he usually does sessions with them. Um, the personal retreats, um, like I said, is for various individuals so they could come to the monastery um, at any time, even during we on weekdays and even sometimes on weekends. A question visitors to the Mount often ask is how one can join the Brotherhood and be a part of the Manson Benedict family. Joining the monastery is like entering into a relationship 
a relationship with like-minded men who are on a similar path seeking God. St. Benedict in his rule outlines that the only criterion that one should look for in a young man seeking to join this community is whether he truly seeks God. Now when someone expresses a desire to want to be a monk, we first speak with him on a one-to-one -one basis, the novice master, and then eventually he would invite him to spend a few days in the community where he can have an inside look. Well, the first process to become a monk is the discernment process, which is very important. Um, being